And why, I ask, are there no good tutorials on skill trees? Well, today we fix that. In most games, the deeper you go into a skill tree, the stronger the rewards. So, it only makes sense that you'd have to unlock earlier skills to access the good stuff. And to make all those skills connections work, structure variables are exactly what we need. All right, let's talk about structure variables. These are super handy when you want to organize a bunch of related information, like skill names, their levels, and the requirements to be unlocked, such as we'll need in our skill tree. Think of a structure variable like a folder. Inside that folder, you can have other folders or documents, or in programming terms, children. So each of these children will have its own data, numbers, text, or even more structures, if you want to get fancy. So how do we actually use them? Well, once you've created a structure variable, you can drill down into its parts using dot notation. For instance, skill tree dot fireball dot current level will dive inside the skill tree structure, then find the child named fireball, then inside of that child, find their own child named cur level, and simply replace cur level with any of the other information you would want, such as dot name to pull up the name, or dot requirement to pull up the requirements. Tired of grabbing information off a of fireball? Simply go back to the first dot and change that to the name of the skill you want to grab. Simple, right? So let's build ours step by step. I'm going to create a new structure variable and name it skill tree. Inside that, we'll add five child structures, warmth, fireball, heating up, searing flame, and greater fireball. Now, inside of each of those, we'll create seven variables. Name, which will hold a text variable with the name of the skill. Cur level, a number variable starting at zero, which will be the current level of the skill. And max level, another number with the maximum level the skill can reach. Two text variables, rec1 and rec2. And these will hold the names of the prereq skills. And finally, rec value 1 and rec value 2, which will be the required level of the prereq. And just a quick heads up, while you're renaming the child structures, GDevelop will automatically shift based on the name. So after each time you change the name, make sure you're actually selected on the structure that you want to be editing. And I actually added an eighth child, details, so I can give a small description of what each skill does. Now that we've set up our structure, the last piece is connecting it to the objects in our scene. On my scene, I have a single skill slot object but I've repeated it five times. The icons on top are just regular sprite objects, which is purely visual. What really matters is that each slot behaves differently, depending on which skill it represents. To make this possible, I gave each slot a variable called skill name. Inside the variable, I store the name of the skill that slot is linked to. This way, when a player interacts with a skill slot, we can look up the exact structure inside of our skill tree that matches the slot's skill name. For example, if I were to write skill tree open bracket skill slot dot skill name close bracket dot max level, it will return the max level of the skill tied to the slot reference. So let's see how this plays out in an actual event. My first two conditions here select the skill slot based on a mouse click. I've also declared two local variables, pass and pass2. I start them as true and later, I'll set them to false if a requirement check fails. This way, if a requirement isn't met, I can prevent the upgrade from happening. Next, I check the structure linked to that slot's skill. If the current level is greater than or equal to the max level, then nothing happens. It's maxed out. But if it's below the max level, and I have at least one skill point available, then we continue. Now for the requirement checks. Each skill can have up to two requirements. By default, the text value is left empty, which automatically sets it to quote zero quote. So if it's not zero, that means the skill does have a requirement. So at this point, I'll set pass to false until I verify the requirement. For requirement one, I compare the current level of the required skill against the value it needs. If the condition passes, I flip the pass back to true, and then I do the same thing for requirement two. Once both pass checks are done, if pass and pass two are still true, I can now subtract a skill point and add one to the current level of the skill I clicked. Using an event like this, you'll be adding levels to your structure variable. So when it comes to adding damage, 
make sure you reference that skill's level to calculate your new damage values. And I have some very basic examples of this where I multiply by my skill trees dot searing flame dot current level as well as the warmth level and the heating up level to add to the base damage. Hopefully this information is enough to get you started with building your own skill trees. Though I know working with structures is a bit complicated, so I'll go ahead and throw my project up on my itch page so you guys can download it and play around. And hopefully this will make it a little easier for you to figure out and build your own. And finally before we go, a huge shout out to all my members. We have Extel, Robcop, Don Sir, and Funky. Thank you all so much for your continued support, and until next time, peace.